morning everybody. Drinking out of my tombstone cup today. Some nice fresh coffee. Hopefully uh, today goes a little better than yesterday. Good morning, Jax. Let me get you a little caught up here with what's going on. As I was coming back from uh, the 101 loop there, pretty much all of a sudden, I started hearing a very familiar sound going on with the RV as I was driving. I knew instantly what it was because I kid you not, every single RV I've had has had an exhaust leak at the manifold gaskets, headers. So I knew instantly what the problem was. That's why I wasn't too concerned. Got back here to Thurston County and um, let me show you what, what we're working with because uh, I already got the gaskets. I'm a V10, so there's a five on each side here. And for the last three days, I've been putting some PB blaster on all of the uh, bolts and nuts in here. However, well, there's two things in here I wanna point out. First of all, right there, you can see all that carbon buildup on the side. When the engine's running, I can put my hand right there and feel it coming out. So I know that's where the gasket was bad right there. But, you know, we're going to do both sides anyway. Well, over here, you can also probably see the very first one I went to take off snapped the bolt. So now we've got the stud inside the cylinder there. And I've got 10 of these. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, and the other side. Uh, 20 total, but 10 on this side. Very first one has broken off. Which is not very exciting. That is a terrible start to this project. I find myself back at my buddy Andrew's place. We're gonna tackle this today, and uh, he's gonna get in here and uh, see what see what we can find. We're probably gonna have to get an easy out for that one in there, and the rest of them, probably gonna apply some heat this time and put some more PV blaster on it and uh, see how many of these are gonna come off in a nice way. And then I have the 20 studs to replace to put all those back in there uh, when we put this all back together. but. We're going to get started on this. I'll let you know how it goes. So here is what it's supposed to look like when it comes out in one piece and doesn't break off somewhere inside the cylinder. Like I said, we're going to be replacing all 20 of these because I'm down there anyway. And uh, we did find the best deal in town for them, an 8-pack, and we need 20. So had to get three of these, and these were 22 bucks a piece, but much better than what AutoZone was charging, $10 a stud. That's $200 in studs and bolts. Probably not gonna work, so very much happier with these. Uh, the other four top ones up here came off no problem without even heating them up yet, no problem, but the bottom one on the side that I broke also snapped. So now we have two out of uh, 10 so far on the passenger side. I do have my little flame torch, so um, we're gonna be using that on the trickier ones. And also something Andrew taught me that I've not used to, but before you start taking them off, he's been tightening them slightly before he starts ranching on them the other way. Um, and you can kind of see him turn inside the cylinder a little bit. So I think that's a, a pretty important thing. I think that's why he's having a little better luck than I did. Well, I went, I went 0 for 1 at least, so. So one stud didn't come out, and since we have 24 of these, and we only need 20 of them, Andrew's gonna do a little trick here, put that on to help secure it, so that he can now take the entire stud out of there. It's just gonna sacrifice for this job to make it easier. Oh yeah! We're loose. And, and we don't have room. And we don't clear the studs. So we'll have to take it off down here, I guess. Okay. All right, so instead of taking those uh, broken bolts out right now, Andrew removed the exhaust donut over there, a couple more bolts hidden back there so that we can uh, hopefully clear it now and get around, maybe. So part of the existing gasket, well, they broke them off into a three-piece and then a two-piece for the 10-cylinder, and the new versions that Ford recommends is the all five in one piece, so there, there, there won't be a, a break in there anymore. I don't know if that's good or bad. I like to think they... Uh, figured something out and made it made it better so that we don't have to do this as often. But I've also heard of problems. People replace the header gaskets and a month later they start leaking again. So, so got the vice grips on there. A little more to grab onto these ones that didn't break. So those two will come off okay. 
The other two we have a lot less to grab onto and only threads, so we shall see. Alrighty, all four bolts came out. Not too much problem, I'm glad. I'm, I was really worried about that. Uh, again, you can see all the uh, carbon buildup over here from that one. <laughs> so gonna, gonna clean all this up, obviously, before I put the new gaskets in and the headers. The other side wasn't leaking as bad as that one was right there, so. But still, might as well do both sides since we're doing this project today. Gonna go run out and grab some anti-seize and uh, then also some some very fine 2000 grit sandpaper just to kind of clean all that up so it's a nice universal fit for the gasket all right we're back had some happy teriyaki for lunch and i know all my youtube mechanics gasped when i said sandpaper we changed our mind <laughs> going with the uh brake cleaner and a and a brush how's that working oh pretty good actually yeah probably better than sandpaper yeah probably just uh, test fitting the gaskets here, made in the USA. I guess that's a good thing. Looking all clean now, putting the new studs in, all 10 of them with some anti-seize for the next time we uh, do this down the road. <laughs> I've been warned quite a few times from other V10 RV owners that uh, the things you will be doing most often is having blown out spark plugs. I guess that's hit and miss. Um, this RV did have a tune-up in 2015 with uh, the right kind of platinum Bosch spark plugs in there. But still, I guess that's something that happens commonly. And uh, the manifold gasket is very common to leak. Uh, many people have done the same exact job. And then, like I said, 30 days later, had these gaskets leaking again. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Just test fit in the gasket there. That's basically what it's going to look like. If it stays. If it wants to stay. It never does. And then uh, do the same thing here on the header outtake just to get all this off. This is where the, the, the leak was, or this one maybe. But no, the first one. Yeah, this area right here was where it was leaking. So clean this one up the same as uh, the intake and that should be good. All right, and after some wiggling around, the new gaskets in there. We are all lined up with the new bolts. Starting to tighten them in. Did have to disconnect the exhaust on both sides just to have a little more room where it attaches in here to the headers. But uh, passenger side's gonna get uh, tightened down here to specs and uh, we're getting close. By the way, in case you're doing this yourself, uh, it says to finger tight the studs into the cylinder head and then we're going for 18 foot pounds uh, on the nuts. All right, all finished up here on the passenger side. New gaskets in there, all new bolts, no more leak. Well, hopefully no more leak. Uh, we've got to hook up the exhaust back to the catalytic converter. And then obviously we still got to do the other side over here. There is no exhaust leak over on this side, but might as well replace it. we got a two pack gasket. I got the bolts and everything and uh, might as well do it now while I have the chance here in Washington before this side goes out in another six months, right? So anyway, you've already seen us uh, work on one. So I'll cut back in tonight when we uh, fire up the engine and listen to see how it sounds. All parked where I'm going to boondock tonight in Lacey. Passenger side. Absolutely no ticking sound anywhere. Driver's side didn't make any noise, but she just purrs like a kitten. I don't know if that'll improve uh, gas mileage, making that little fix. And I don't know how long this fix will last because I've been warned it doesn't last very long. But I'm thankful to have friends all over the country, some mechanic friends. If it comes to something inside the RV, I have 100% confidence. I've replaced pretty much everything you can inside of an RV and done some carpentry work as well. But when it comes to chassis work, now uh, I have a little bit of understanding for uh, how to go about changing out the exhaust manifold gaskets. And we did have to pop the engine up a little bit, put a jack under the cross member, get the engine up a little bit so that we could work between the frame and where the uh, manifold there goes. But got her done. How about that? Easy as pie, no stress, right? Cool. Jack's man, I really appreciate all your help today. You are a really good helper by not getting in the way, I guess, and sleeping all day. Yeah, that's a that's a good boy. 
Tim's a good boy. You want to watch some TV? Want to watch a movie? Yeah? You know, it's also funny. Jackson and I tried to watch a movie last night. Uh, the the RV store that I don't want to mention, the, the big RV store, they have a top 10 uh, best RV movies of all time. And there was one on the list that I had never even heard about. Uh, RV with Robin Williams was number five, which I would have said is the best. Number two would be Spaceballs with the flying Winnebago. But uh, number one on their list was Lost in America. Uh, it's a 1985 film. I didn't know anything about it. It's very slow going. Anyway, they get an RV. That's all cool. They go on the road. The family's all excited. They get parked and I made it two minutes after they get parked in Vegas because the wife starts complaining and saying, uh, let's go get a hotel room and have a spa and, and have rooms. Like she actually said room service. And then they're like, okay, yeah, let's just park the RV and go to a hotel. It's like, I'm out. I, I have no idea what happens in the movie later. I don't even know if that was a joke, <laughs> but I lost it right there. That, that, that's a typical RV -er. First chance they get, they want to go to a resort, a hotel. Even though you have a hotel and a refrigerator and everything in your RV. I don't know, man. Uh, I don't really want to say too much about where I'm lot docking tonight in Lacey, Thurston County, because these places seem to disappear anytime I say anything. And uh, a lot of traveling people rely on this particular paved piece a lot for some reason. Uh, we seem to have anywhere between 12 and 20 RVers, car campers, banners. So, um, not going to reveal this location. However, it doesn't really matter because I am leaving the area in my next video for good. Th saying goodbye to Lacey, Thurston County, everything. Um, today, today was just a weird day because it was a repair day and that happens on the road. Just like you repair your house, uh, I have to repair the RV sometimes to keep her in uh, tip top shape. I didn't get to travel or do anything fun today. That's okay. Still made a video out of it. I hope maybe you learned something. Maybe you're not as afraid of doing headers as I've always been. But yeah, we got to hit the road. I'm planning a trip. So Jackson, I'll see you back on the road very, very soon. Uh, hope you have some good 4th of July plans coming up. Uh, if not, come along with Jackson and I and just watch your computer because uh, you know we're going to take you to some spectacular places on the road. And I'm really looking forward to it. So guys, take care. Jackson, I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.